Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, Life with Unam Sagasa. Today we are in Midran at Swiss Country Club. We are visiting Udesh Zumba Fitness Club. Udesh started a business about eight years ago. She started it for a good cause. So I'm here to chat with her. She'll be telling us more about what is it about? Why did she decide to start a business that she's not even enjoying the money? Please do come with me as we chat to her. Let's go dance, dance with me. <laughs> Today we are at Swiss Country Club. We are visiting Dash, who is the owner and founder of Dash Fitness Club, right? Uh, she started this business about year, eight years ago. She will be sharing with us why she started the business. Dash, welcome to my channel. How are you? Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me, Namsa. Thank you for everybody for dialing in and listening. I'm Zumba Dash. <laughs> Um, so yeah, uh, I started this business eight years ago, Namsa. Mm -hmm. um, I was going through a very, very difficult time in my life. Um, you know, I was going through a divorce at the time and I was looking for a place to exhale. Um, I had moved from the south of Johannesburg to the north of Johannesburg and I just needed a place where I could go and release and vent mm. and just have fun and escape from everything. Okay. Um, I really had a passion for dance. And I was first introduced um, to Zumba in, a, in Virgin Active in the South. And, but when I moved towards the north of Johannesburg, I couldn't get that flavor of dance. So I decided with a lot of encouragement from my friends and families that why not me? Why, you know, why not why don't mm -hmm. you open a studio yourself? Because I had such a passion for it. And so with a lot of skepticals, because you know, you, you, you always doubt yourself. You doubt your abilities. Like, mm. I can't do this. Like, you know, how can I be an instructor? But I had such a passion for it. I had such a passion for for dance and, and for fitness, that I went on to explore uh, how I could get my license. I got accredited, uh, internationally accredited that. Wow. Uh, yeah, so it's from uh, all the way from America. Um, so I did the course, passed it, and got my accreditation. And then I opened my studio in uh, Kailami. It was a small studio. I think it only could take about 10 students. It was a really small martial arts studio in Kailami. Um, the gentleman there afforded me the space and he allowed me to, to, to open up and, and do the classes. You know, and like anything else, you know, anything that I'm saying in life, you know, when you, when you start, you have a lot of reservations if the small business is going to be successful. Mm, because true. I'm a mom, I'm, I'm working, I have a full-time job, so this was my side hustle. Um, and, but when I started it, I didn't look at it to make, I uh, wasn't looking at it to make, do a business. I really wanted to just create a space for, for women. Mm -hmm. um, and so I started it. Um, I had three students, which paid the, the rent, I remember, at the time. So I was like, okay, it's fine, it's great. And then just by word of mouth, it grew and it grew and it grew. Um, you know, people, I found that there was more women like myself, more people that need escape from either work or from home life or from just the stresses that life brings to us. You know, we have so many titles. Um, in our lives, you know, whether we're an employee, whether a cook, we're a cleaner, we're everything, we're teacher, you know, counselor. Mm. So yeah, I created the space and, and I just found women just, just flocked to it. It was just amazing and it grew. Okay, and, and you, you, you said you got accredited. Did you go attend classes to be accredited? Yes, um, so uh, to be a Zumba instructor, you have to have a Zumba accreditation and you have to pay every month a Zen fee in dollars. Um, so I attended a training session and there they teach you the different flavors um, and they teach you how to have your students safe in class, uh, the different styles of dancing because Zumba is a collaboration of different styles, you know, it's, it's salsa, tangos, um, it's uh, bhangra, east meets west, it's Asian, it's all different styles, it's hip hop. Um, you know, it's all different styles of, of dance, you know, it's ballet even, it teaches you core, um, muscle strength, so it's a whole variation flavors of dance that they incorporate together to make dance fitness, because that's what Zumba is. It's, it's really an art of dance fitness. Okay, and um, how long did it take? 
Um, it took, the, it was a full day course, but there's various different courses you go throughout the different, uh, you know, throughout the year. They teach you different, um, there's different courses that you go on, different certifications. Um, I also was a certified group exercise instructor at the time for a gym, and that was a six months course uh, where you had to go in and you had to understand the body anatomy, understand the muscles, understand how to work with a group of people for the safety of themselves, ensure that the exercises that you're teaching your students don't harm them and to also to be able to identify and see the limits of your students, you know, and just also to protect yourself as an instructor uh, from any, you know, you have to indemnify yourself of any, any injuries in the, in the students because you can imagine you get all sorts of different sizes, different ages, different ailments True. walking through your door. So you need to be able to protect yourself as well as an instructor. So you need to be able to understand and identify and know which part of the body as well when you're doing a particular choreography for music, what muscle you're working, you know. Um, you know so it, it, it doesn't help saying, okay, we're working our hamstrings now, mm. when that's not your hamstrings, that's your biceps. You know, you need to understand the different anatomies in your body. And as an instructor, when you put choreography together, you need to understand what you're focusing on, what's part of the body, whether it's upper body, lower body, core, uh, that type of thing, you know. Mm. Uh, so, Dash, you don't only help for the ladies who come here to distress, you know, to exhale. You also help uh, different NPOs. Please tell us about that. Why did you decide, instead of enjoying the money, you take the money and then you distribute it to various NPOs? Yeah, uh, so when I started eight years ago, I didn't envision the studio to be so, to grow so big and to be so successful. And when I originally started it, it was just a place for, for me to exhale and to have like, and to create the safe space for mm -hmm. other women. And you know, little did I know that there was a lot of women like me out there that needed this a place to just go and have fun, you know, be free, de-stress. Mm -hmm. And over the last eight years, um, you know, in the first year, as it started growing, we needed to get bigger spaces and the, the studio sort of generating a lot of income. And it's not that I, like you say, I could have, I, everybody needs money, but mm. I have a day job, a full-time day job that pays my bills. Um, but this really pays for my passion and for my hobby and for my true purpose in life. Um, when we looked at the, the income coming to the studio, I thought, well, you know, it's very easy to pay school fees and buy shoes and buy, you know, just luxurious thing, but there was a bigger calling. Um, together with myself and my partner, uh, Yushio, we decided that we're going to give back to the community um, and we're going to, to, to do good with it. So we started off originally feeding the homeless, feeding around the areas. Um, every year we do our big winter drive um, and where we feed and clothe, buy blankets and, and really keep those on the streets warm and, and fed. But one year when we went about uh, two, maybe just over two years ago, on one of our charity drives, and remember we're doing this the last eight years, but two years ago we came across a, a young man standing by the Bonner Valley Spa here in Madrid, and he was, he was begging, and you know, we stopped and we had a conversation with him because there was something deeper here, why was he there? Often we see people standing with the robots and we want to know what is their story, you know, where are their families, um, you know, is, why are they here all alone? And so Yash and I stopped and we had a conversation with this young man and he, he told us about his world of addiction. It really is a disease which we've come to know and understand. And we decided, you know, that we were going to help him. <coughs> I said, instead of helping uh, the various different MPOs, which we still do where we can, if we can, uh, cash permitting, it depends on how much comes into the studio. Because now, I'm, I, as I said, you know, I don't check who pays, who doesn't pay, because mm. if women are joining the organization and coming to dance and they can't pay, that's okay with me too because it's here to create a space for, for an exhale for women, you know, mm -hmm. but majority of the girls do pay. Um, and with that, we, it depends what comes in in the month, we d decide what sort of charity event we're going to do for that particular month. We then took this young man and we paid for his rehab. We rehabilitated him um, and we put him into rehab and just to help him get back onto his feet. And look, that was the start of this whole rehabilitation program that Yash, Yash and I have gone through the last six years. I think we're very proud to say there's over about six, seven, seven, seven members that we've helped. Um, some were very successful. 80% of, uh, of them are still clean. We probably will be celebrating two years of sobriety with them now coming up, you know, by the grace of God. God, God. But some of them also relapsed. Um, mm. So you can't help everybody, but we try. Yes. Somebody's trying, somebody's lending a hand. And you must understand, by the time they end up on the streets, they, they've really been washed up by their families. Their families have had, you know, heartache and they don't trust them anymore. So Yash and I went into the streets, collected these young men, 
put them through rehab if we have the cash. Sometimes their families support us in paying these. Sometimes we fill in the balance where we can. Um, and yeah, and then after they come out of rehab, there's a rehabilitation program. It's the after, the, it's the, that's support that they need when they come out. And that's what Yash and I also embark on doing. Mm -hmm. We turn one of our homes into a, a safe haven halfway ho house, and that's where the fees goes to, you know, pays for the, the lights, the water, the bond, the food to, to feed these guys, because they need to be reintegrated into society. Um, and that's what we try to help doing. So the motto of the studio is changing lives, one dance step at a time not just the women that join our organization because they really do i do transform lives through the art of you know dance yes, fitness yes. but also they have a bigger purpose um you know i mean it's so great to feel that okay i'm coming to class i'm paying my 300 rand but i know that fees is being also used to change somebody else's life and that's what the members in my studio in dfs enable me to do mm. Mm. and i'm not saying you uh, divorce it's it's good or it's right obviously it's, it's not the right thing I can only imagine what you were going through when you, you know, when you uh, on your divorce process. Obviously, it's it's a it's a heartache, it's a headache, it's all that. But and right now, as I'm sitting and chatting to you, I'm looking at it in a positive way that God works in mysterious ways because. Uh, in everything that you had gone through, God understood, Ruti, if you're still there, you wouldn't be where you are now because he allowed you to go through whatever you went through so that you can now be this dash that you are helping these souls. And he brought you a partner who supports your vision, mm -hmm. who's also on the same path as you. And yeah, that's great. A hundred percent. You know, often, often also when I say, you know, when terrible things are happening to us, it's very hard to understand why. Um, and I always trust and I always believe, and, and I live by this, that God has a plan for us all. Mm -hmm. Even when he's taking us through, through tough times, there's always a silver lining. And the only time you're going to realize that is when you reflect. If I have to reflect back now in my life, at that time was probably one of the most hardest, most challenging time in my life. But had I not gone through those storms, you know, I wouldn't be sitting here on the sunny day um, with this, all the shine and all this energy to give off. You know, it once was gloomy, but it's full of rainbows and sunshine now, you know. But I had to walk that path, had to, to go through, through the storms to see the rainbow, definitely. Because you would still be comfortable and doing the Zumba at the gym only. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, Adesh, tell me, what are the challenges? What what are the challenges that you face with within the gym, within the NPOs or the people that you help? Yeah, so I mean, there's a range of challenges. I think firstly, in my personal capacity, it takes a lot of strict time management. You know, people often ask me, you know, how do I manage it? So for one, to be able to do everything, you need to have really strict time management, you know, uh, full-time mom, full-time job, full-time coach, you know, full-time student, well, okay, part-time student, because uh, I'm, you know, currently studying. So if you need, this is excuse where I don't have enough time, where people say there's, there's no such thing. If something's important enough to you, I really believe you make the time. True. Um, a lot of my students, and I hear women say, but I don't have time because I've got to go home and do homework, um, you know, I've got to do reports, I, I don't have time. I always believe, like how you make time to eat, because it's critical to your function of your body, you need to make time for yourself. Um, you know, so that's one thing I often hear the ladies say, but I don't have time. Always make time for things that's important to you. The other challenges I me uh, have in, in the studio um, is, you know, different flavors, different ages, different age groups. So you need to have a cater for the balance. You know, you've got your Energizer Bunny, and then you've got your uh, eight-year-old Gogo in the back who still wants to have a good time. So I've got to really balance that, you know. What's good for noms or what's good for dish, you know, different flavors. And give, give my members in the studio a really mixed flavor, types, styles mm -hmm. of music, a tempo of music as well. So, so I really try to do that, manage that. Um, you know, in my, in my business life, I've got to manage work, make sure that my work is done in time so that I can be here, be present. Um, and then lastly, my challenges with running uh, uh, a halfway house or all these ad addicts that we're trying to help, they're manipulators, they're liars, they, you know, they really suck your energy out because you've got to constantly push and, and, and make them see that this, you're trying to help them. Um, you know, they have a mindset, but Yash is very good with that. You know, he really is a big support. He tries to help guide and counsel these guys. So that's quite challenging on us as well, quite taxing on us. But, mm. you know, you've got a, we've got a purpose in life. 
Um, and our motto in life is to help and not hurt. Mm. Um, so as far as we can, we will always try to help. That will always be the ethos. Try to help and not hurt individuals as we go along this journey in all different aspects of our life, you know. Mm. Whether it's the members in our studios, whether it's our families and relatives, whether it's colleagues that we're working with, whether it's the addicts that we're trying to assist, you know. We always have this ethos where we want to help and not hurt. Mm. Uh, and through that comes a lot of challenges, but we're just going to take it one day at a time, you know. And we also just got to trust in our higher being yes. that he will never let us down. He walks by us and he guides us and he does give us challenges. But through those challenges, we take the learnings that comes from there. You know, True. like I say, not every addict that we help um, is sober, um, unfortunately. But majority of, this, of those people that we've helped are. But the addicts that have relapsed, they've taught us things. Um, and when through those learnings, we take it and we adapt it and we learn and we know how to know or how not to the next time, mm. you know, through those learnings. And, you know, you are always pouring out the ladies at home, counseling the guys. Where do you fill your cup? So, I, so, so for me, this is my recharge time. Okay. I call it my recharge time. This is, um, you know, prayer for me is a big part of my life. Meditation, chanting, um, I have to have that quiet time for me to recharge myself, okay. to re-energize myself. Zumba coming here, as much as I'm helping them, they're helping me as well. Because to my one hour when I come and I instruct, I come alive. Um, I really, I love it. It's my place of Busa. You know, it, it, it still is what it was eight years ago. Eight years ago, I started this for me. And I'm not playing a martyr here, please, Thompson, please don't get me wrong. But as much as I'm helping them, my students, they're helping me as well because I love, I love what I do. I love my hobby. And that's really what keeps me sane. It, it releases my endorphins so that I've got more energy to work, to play, to, to learn, to study, to, to apply myself. So coming here to Zumba is really a fulfillment of all things that needs me, that I need to function, you know, as a human. So, yeah. That's nice. So how much are your classes? So classes are every Monday and Wednesday at 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. and Saturday at 8 to 9 a.m. here at the Swiss Country Club in Madrid. Um, but then, and that's 300 rand for the month. But then I also have a second studio in Sunning Hill, uh, Sunning Hill Village at Cats uh, Down School. Um, and that's every Tuesdays and Thursdays, half past five to half past six, and that's 300 as well. But if my members, because they either work in Santon or live in Madrid, coming and going to and fro, if they, for a dual membership for both studios, it's 400. So you can either go to Sunning Hill for 300 or you can come to Madrid for 300. But if you want access to both studios, then it's 400. And the online? Online students, so you can, you can Zumba with us anywhere in the world, guys. You can Zumba from your home. From the, I've got students from, on, online from the Kenya, from USA, from wherever, from Durban, from Cape Town, from all over the world. So if you don't have time to actually physically get to a studio, you can do it online. And online classes are Monday and Wednesday, 6 to 7, and Saturdays, 8 to 9 as well. And that's also 300 rand a month. Okay. And that's what I was going to... Is it also 300 if the, the ones online, is it also 300 if they join Sunning Hill and Midrand? Yeah, so, so the, the, the time, so online is only the Midrand timing and oh. time slot. So if you're doing online, you can only do three times a month, oh. Monday, Wednesdays, and Saturdays, and that's 300. So the, I don't broadcast from the Sunning Hill studio because the studio is in the basement and the broadcast is not the best, best there, so I don't, oh. I don't broadcast from Sunning Hill. No, actually, I was also going to ask if this is the only branch you've answered that question. And where do people reach you? If somebody out there loves, likes what you are doing and they would like to help, to assist in any way, where do they contact you? So you are welcome to reach me out on zumbadesh at gmail.com. That's Z-U-M-F-A-R-Y-B-A. D E S H at gmail.com. Drop me an email, I'll happily respond. Um, and you know, welcome all the help, welcome all the support that you guys can give us. Because here at DFS, we really do change lives one dance step at a time. Mm. I'm also gonna put the email on the description box below. And Dash, what are your last words to people? What can you say to people out there? Guys, your, your body is your temple. Um, invest in it. If you don't do it, no one else is going to do it for you. You decide what you feed it. You decide how what you do with it. So you need to exercise. 
we know today's life is so high paced, it's so stressful. So come to Zumba, come to any exercise, at, at any, do, whether it's a walk, whether it's a run, invest in yourself because we are so mentally stimulated that we need a balance to be physically stimulated. Um, so come, try a class out. Your first class is free, so you've got absolutely nothing to lose except some calories. So I really, really encourage you, whether you want to do it online or physically. Physical is fabulous because you feel the energy from everyone. Mm. But invest in yourself. Love yourself enough to want to see the best version of you. And the best version of you is not a size zero, or it's not a size eight or a, uh, or a 10. A si the best version of you could be a size 40 because a healthy look is not the size of your hips and your waist. It's about your mindset. What do you put in? What do you eat? How do you exercise? How do you take care of yourself holistically? So my, my word of advice to you is invest in you because you are your greatest asset. You're worth it. <laughs> Thank you so much for allowing me into your space and thank you so much for those wise words and thank you so much for the good that you do. May God richly bless oh, you. Thank you. And guys, that's it from me and Dash. Don't forget to share, like, subscribe and comment below. Thank you so much. God bless and goodbye. <laughs> Bye.